Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a max function equation. We haven't done anything like this before, so it's for the first time and I'm very excited. Now, what is the meaning of the max function? Let's talk about that a little bit. So a max function basically returns the highest value from a data set. So in this case we have two numbers that are basically unknown and at this point. So suppose you have something like this, like max of 2 and 5. Since 5 is greater than 2, it's just going to return 5. What if the numbers are equal? Well, let's say we have the max of 3 and 3, then obviously our function is just going to return the 3. All right, cool. Having said that, let's go ahead and dive into this problem. Now, we, we are given that the max of x plus 1 over 3 and x minus 2 over 5 is equal to x, and we're supposed to solve for x. So how do we go about solving these kinds of problems, right? So we first compare these two quantities. We don't know which one is greater, so we're going to kind of do this case by case. So let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit so that we can write here. So what I'm going to say first is what if or if x plus 1 over 3 is greater than x minus 2 over 5. And obviously you could just include the equality there in one of these, but it doesn't really matter. I can also look at it separately. Now, if the first quantity is greater than the second one, obviously, our max function is going to return the greater one, which is x plus 1 over 3 in this case. So this implies that x plus 1 over 3 is going to be equal to x because that's our result, right? So let's go ahead and solve the, this inequality and the equation and see if they match up. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply here because 3 and 5 are positive quantities. 5x plus 5 is greater than 3x minus 6. Subtracting, I get 2x is greater than negative 11 and x is greater than negative 11 halves. So if my x is greater than negative 11 halves, then x should take the, that value. So let's go ahead and find that value. x plus 1 is equal to 3x and then 2x is equal to 1 and this means x is equal to 1 half. Now, is this true? If x is greater than if x is greater than negative eleven halves, is x equal to two? And that's a yes. So our result actually satisfies the inequality, which means it's a valid solution. So x equals one half is actually a solution of this problem. Okay, and you can definitely check that. For example, if you re replace x with one half, you're gonna get the following. So let's go ahead and do it. So if I replace x with 1 half, I get 1 half plus 1, which is 3 halves. If you divide it by 3, you're going to get max of 1 half, comma. And in the second one, if you replace x with 1 half, you're going to be getting something like 1 half minus 4 halves, which is negative 3 halves. Divide by 5, it's going to be negative 3 tenths. And obviously, the maximum of these two numbers is going to be 1 half, which happens to be the x value. So x equals 1 half, you don't have to do this, but if you want, you can. So x equals 1 half is a valid solution. Is that the only solution? We have to check. How do we check? We're going to look at the other scenario. So what if our expression, which is x plus 1 over 3, is less than the second one, right? Obviously, then, of course, since the second expression is greater here, which is this one, then the result will be that and which that is equals x. So it's it's going to be the same thing pretty much with, you know, the expression being replaced by x minus 2 over 5. So is this true? Let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm going to do the same thing, but you don't have to go, go through all of this because we know that the result is going to be just reversed from here. So you should be getting something like if x is, if x is less than negative 11 halves, then x should be what? Well, we're going to find out x minus 2 is equal to 5x. 4x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, great. Now, is this true? If x is less than negative 11 halves, then x should be negative 1 half. Obviously, that's not true because negative 11 halves, anything less than negative 11 halves can never equal negative 1 half because negative 1 half is greater than negative 11 halves. Does that make sense? So this is not a valid solution. Now, let's go ahead and check what happens if these two quantities are equal to each other. Obviously, we know the result, right? If they're equal, then from here we're going to get x equals negative 11 halves, right? Obviously. And is the result, is the result, and in this case, of course, it's not going to matter because we can safely say that since they're equal, 
So is it true also that x minus 2 over 5, let's say this we take as the maximum because it doesn't really matter, that needs to equal x. But we know from there that x needs to be negative 1 half when, you know, just from the above. So it's not going to work. We're saying that if x is equal to negative 11 halves, then x needs to equal negative 11 negative one half, which is a contradiction, obviously. So when they're equal, we don't really get any solutions from here either. So the only valid solution that we get for this equation is going to be x equals one half. All right. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.